Hello, welcome to a wet and horrible G-Fix. It's Black Friday, which is the last Friday before Christmas, which is when everyone goes out. As you can see, we have an empty space. As you can also see, we have a rear quarter section for the blue Defender. That's what I should be doing. What I'm actually doing is waiting for a recovery truck. When it turns up, I'll show you what I've let myself get talked into. God damn it. Why do I do it to myself? Okay, this is what I've got myself into. This is a good friend's car. Uh, Nigel Lewis, aka Super Mario, aka wisest man in South Wales. Um, this is his little Peugeot. And it's been to another garage. We've diagnosed it as cam belt failure. So I've ordered all the parts. I did one of these recently. And the way I did it, it was a nightmare. But I've said this time, I'm only going to do it if I change everything. There is another video for the Citroen that I did this on. Uh, which I, I haven't put out yet. I might put out soon. We'll see. So, jam recovery. Went and picked it up for me this morning. Thank you very much, mate. Brilliant service as ever. Anyone in South Wales wants a car moved, hit them up. Um, the parts are already there, so we're gonna strip some bits off top end quickly just to confirm. Because I'm not sure how they diagnosed this. Because they, this other garage, they don't seem to have taken a lot off really. Um, Whether they just peeled the top cam belt cover off. So what we are going to do is airbox off a full meter. This pipe, um, this T piece, that. EGR, I think that's EGR. Disconnect all these fuel lines, get this cover off, and a rocker cover off, and just check. Well, I got off the parts, I booked them now. Um, I haven't done diagnostics on any, because on the last one, all the shoulders, camshaft sensor fault. But it's because the camshaft wasn't turning. So, yeah, do a quick strip down and go from there. All right, so about, judging by the time I took the last video, 20 minutes in, um, airbox and all associated stuff is off. These plugs, not those plugs, those plugs with these yellow inserts are a nightmare, so I'll just leave that on there. Um, so now what we're gonna do is, fuel lines off there, uh, take this bracket off, I think EGR's gotta come off, and then we'll unclip some of these injector um, uh, and return lines. Yeah, anyway. Um, and we should be able to get this end camshaft cover off. It's all 7s, 8s, 10s and a couple of 13s. But it's, as you can see, we've got a sizable pile of stuff already. What I did on the last job is made a label that box. Otherwise, you end up with a lot of bolts. Yeah, like another 20 minutes. We should have that end cover off and the rocket cover off. And then see where we go from there. Weather's lovely. I'm, I'm not utilising a washing machine and a dishwasher as a temporary work table. But all my cabinets are at the back. And one thing I have learned is if you put everything down on the floor, it absolutely kills your back. So I have something... At the same level, you also need quite a lot of boxes to put everything in. Now, it, it, if it has done the cam belt, then we're definitely doing the valves, we're definitely doing the head gasket, there's a number of other things we're definitely doing. If that's the case, it'll be bumper off, bumper bar off, radiator off, intercooler off, 
uh, fold the, the headlights out, fold the uh, air conditioning condenser out the way, uh, front wheels off, wheel ash liners off, and then we've got pretty good, not pretty good access. We're not doing too badly to get the things. Um, I did break something if I'm honest. This stupid like boost pipe splitter thing, plastic one. There's one bolt in the top, there's two going in that way underneath. Um, I got this one off. That one I loosened and I tried to rotate it and the, the tab fell off. I'll be honest, those two are not going back in. This one will go back in, that's fine. Don't tell anyone I did say that. Okay, next bit. Right, so we're now in to the strip down and as happens when you get to a certain age that is very floppily dotly and if we look down here we've got one two so it's left hand if you look let me see. See there, you can see the top of the valve. Shouldn't be able to see the top of the valve. See there, there's a broken. Oh, focus, you bastard. Right, anyway, the. Oh, now one's broke. So it's all it's exactly the same as the, left, uh, the last one I did. It's every left hand, which I think. I don't know if that's exhaust or inlet, to be honest. Um, yeah, so we've kind of confirmed the unfortunate analysis. So the cam belt, which I'd imagine is broken further down. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, we've also got the wheels off, so we can get wheel ash liners off, get this front bumper out of the way. Uh, probably start ripping it to bits. But first, I'm going to go and pick all the parts up and let me show you what we're going to put in it then or what I'm going to do is put all the parts in and put in the last one and I'll fix the last one so yeah so to get the rock the cover off there's two tens on this end one underneath the top cover and then the rest are just eight mils uh, you unclip all the injector wiring and clip this out this bracket on the front and then just get it up high enough to, to get it out. So I don't know if we're gonna get the head off today. We're gonna to try. We'll see how it goes. Um are we anywhere near the timing marks? It doesn't actually matter. Because we're taking the head off. Yeah. Okay, Twibby factors. And we're back and got what we need so we got gates uh timing belt water pump kit set head bolts four inlet valves four exhaust valves cam kit including followers and lifters and a head gasket and that's basically what you need to fix one of these when the head gasket goes so it's black friday going out later we're gonna get as much of this apart as we can. Um, we're just gonna rip the, not rip the. We're gonna delicately and sympathetically remove the entire front. So wheel ash liners, both sides, bumper headlights, bumper bar, drain the coolant system, radiator off, intercooler off. I don't know. This is no, I don't think there's a panel thing. Ah, oh, we'll see you anyway. But, yeah. Easy if we say fast. <laughs> uh, I haven't really been able to achieve that much. Oh, I'm kidding. Yes, I have. So, bumpers off. Radiator and intercooler panel with the bottom. Base uh, crash bar thing. As anything, a couple of little things take longer than almost all of it. 
because that's what life is like. Um, these things are a nightmare, these clampy things. To, they clamp the, you need to take the DPF off. Um, there's another one on the bottom of the downpipe there. You can just see the thread a bit. And then there's two bolts on a clamp which hold this to the front of the end. No, sorry, you couldn't see my finger. There and there. So we're going to raise it up again, get the bottom clamp off, then drop the DPF off. Hopefully leave the turbo attached to the manifold attached to the head. That looks like a bit of a pain to... Oh, did I leave it last time? I think I might have took it off last time. Uh, yeah, so we're not far. Get that off. Uh, take the drive belt off. That's the tension of the drive belt. Take the drive belt off. I think probably... The problem is, there's a bracket here. Which is... I think that needs to come off as well. So we need to get alternator, air conditioning pump off. To get this steel bracket here, which holds all the cables. Get that off to get to the aluminium bracket. Because... Fairly sure. Where is it? I think there's a bolt that goes into the head. So we need to get all that off. So we'll do that first. Then it's in, in manifold injectors. There's one sneaky bolt right down the back, which, if I'm honest, doesn't go back in. A couple like that. Um, then. Once the tensioner dry belt's out of the way, then as you can see the way latch liner out, we can take the crank pulley off, crankshaft sensor off, get the bottom cover off. And yeah, easy if you say it fast. But it is just, it's going alright. Uh I've had to cut one or two bolts off, but it's how old is this car? Six years, seven years? Uh, it's French. Very lucky that's all about to cut off. So we'll keep... Uh, uh, starting to feel the doubts now. Um, what does it go into a head? Yes, I think there's one bolt. Might not have to take the alternator off actually. Hmm, we'll see. We we'll play it by your. Hmm. Yeah, so we got to the same stage we did last time, and it pretty much. Oh, you, oh, you can't see. See that? No, you can't see. No. Hang on. We do that. See, there's a noticeable lack of teeth on our section of belt. That's not good. So, take the tension off and have a looky looky. <coughs> so I just support it on the sump, on two wheel, on the two wheels off the car. It's a bit dubious, but yeah. But, oh, the tension has gone. I don't know, we'll have a look now. You knew. Yeah, so I had problems with this last time as well. There's this block covers the bottom bolt for the inlet manifold. You can't get the inlet manifold out. Uh, you can't get this fuel filter bracket out without getting the inlet manifold off, which means you've got to get this block off. Now, there's one very tricky bolt down the bottom, which you've got to do with a four foot extension. I can't quite get to this one here. Uh, that comes out the way. You might even be able to see it. It's on this. No, you can't see it. Right, we're going to call it for today. So I think, I think we've done okay. Um, should be fresh set fingers, slightly warmer fingers. I wear in the morning. Should be uh, head should be off. And we can do new valves and start the reconstruction. But yeah, as we saw, cam belt is knackered. Uh, 
followers. I don't know what the, the finger things are. Four of them are broke. So yeah, once you've got that block out the way, into manifold off, fuel pump fil uh, fuel filter block out the way. Then we can take the top uh, upper cam carrier, lower cam carrier, which then means we can get to the tablets and the followers, and then head off. I temporarily put this engine mount back on because um, I need to lift it up. But I'm, I want to get it headed off, but time's ticking away and I've got things to do. So, yeah, we will return tomorrow. And we're back. And we took more shit off. So yeah, one of the most, one of the more difficult jobs on this is getting this block off, which has got two tens on the, uh, there's like a cooling flange, uh, a nut which goes on one of the inlet manifold studs, and then there's a secret bolt underneath, which is a nightmare to get to and involves three foot of extensions and God knows what. Um, to get the injector pipes off, you need a 17mm crow's foot because they're down there uh, to crack the bottom end. Top ones are 14, that's easy, you can do them with a spanner. So we just, it's two turns to take the air pump off the end of the cam. Um, we're getting to the point, yeah, we're going to take this top cam carrier off. Do we take the cam sensor out? I might take the cam sensor out just so we've got it, so it doesn't get damaged. So yeah, these are all eights, they can come out cam can come out we'll have a look then at fishing all the broken bits out and then the next section down is this one and i think then what we've got to do is thermostat housing uh there's one bolt on the diesel pump at the back put it back down on the blocks so the engine mount can come off again because that's just on temporarily because it needed to go up in the air and then the head will be off so yes yeah, so we took the turbo off uh, but we'll leave the exhaust manifold on because the exhaust manifold studs look a bit nasty yeah it's a lot to it and he said should i scrap my car i should have said yes Never mind. Right, next bit. So, upper carrier's out. Cam is out. Ooh. This is a bit worse than the other one I did. Oh, no. We've actually dropped a valve. Well, it doesn't look like it's dropped that far. You can see these are the broken. Should look like that one there. Uh, that's a very broken one. That's a very broken one. That's so broken it's not there. And that one is just cracked. Hang on. Where it connects on the top of the valve. So again, same as last time, it's this left hand, left hand one on each one. So we're going to take this part off now. Start fishing out broken bits. You should be able to see a bit more there. Yeah, I'm a bit worried about that one. Hopefully the end doesn't come off the valve. If the end's coming off the valve, we may be screwed. Bastard. Alright, so you can see the carnage a bit better. Hopefully, less of the bits have disappeared. The problem I had on the last one was... The, see where the roller bearings are coming out? They all disappeared down into the sump, so I had to take the sump off. Looks like this time we're going to get lucky, because no, that's the one that's nearest to coming apart. Um, that one's just spread. The roller's still complete on that one, and the roller's still complete on that one. So, okay. The only concern, <laughs> one of the concerns is... Um, yeah, so you can see that's what's, that is what it's like, and that's what it should be like. I not broke. That 
one again. Oh, see, we are still. Where's the broken bit gone? Right, I'm going to do some fishing with a magnet and see if we can get any bits out. Uh, put these in order so I know what bits, complete ones are leaving for the minute. Right, see, I like that one. Oh, oh, I'm going to stay there. Oh, well, that's proper smashed, that's. All right, let's see what we can do. Okay, so we've got our punk. We think we've got our punk. There's always one more ball. Right, you little monkey. Uh, think we're gonna be okay. Ooh, what's that there? This is a definite imprint of a valve, and a valve, and a valve. The other side doesn't hit, I'm assuming this stuff down here is, that's just some carbon build up I think. So, the balls are okay. Oh, I just took my gloves off now. Let's have a look underneath. Um, so it doesn't look too bad really. Even the valve that, which one is it? Oh, that one. No, it's not that one. That one. In the valve that the collets have come off. But the valves are pennies. They're like, I don't know, six pounds. I'll go back in here. Well, five pounds for inlets and six pounds for exhaust. So... They've obviously impacted the pistons hard enough to leave a dent in the pistons and damage all those rocker assemblies. So there's no, once you get to this stage, there's no point not doing valves and head gasket. And obviously that collar to come off the one, so we would have had to take the head off anyway. So yeah, I'm going to change all the valves, grind in the new ones, new head gasket, new head bolts, and then it start going back together. But I've had a look down all the balls, there's no damage. Uh, doesn't appear to be any damage. A little bit of a carbon build up at the top, but we're not going to worry about that. Um, I need to clean up this deck of the block. 
again, I'm not going to be too concerned about that. I'll turn it by hand. No. Okay. Yeah. Doing alright. Uh, Derek from next door is about to pop up so we can get our new trailer out the compound. And then we are a multi uh, multi trailer YouTube channel. Yeah. Okay. Um, clear work uh, wash machine and put a carpet tail on it and change all the valves on there then. Yeah, all right, we're getting there. So yeah, probably next, get the head back on, then get the water pump, which none of the idlers or anything are seized. So yeah, get the head back on, get the water pump changed, get the new cam in. We'll have a look at the difference between the new cam and the old cam. Fairly sure we should be able to see the difference. And we're making a dent in it then. Yeah, okay. Bugger. Just realised I haven't been panicking enough. Because the top would come off that valve there. Which obviously, I've got the spring and the cap somewhere. Um, but it means the collets have come off. I found one collet just nestling there. The other one's gone down into the sump. Which means I've got to put the head back on. So I can put the engine mount back on. So I can raise it up in the air to take the sump off. Which I thought I wasn't going to have to do on this one. Because these are a nightmare. I don't know what they glue it on with. But it's the strongest thing in God's earth. So yeah. Bugger. Where's the head gasket? Oh, there's the head gasket. Oh yeah, so I haven't got a clean, uh, idiot. Of course I haven't got a clean, <laughs> uh, Yeah, so it's gone down there. And I've had a look down there with a the torch and it's not like stuck on oil halfway down or anything. So it has gone in the bottom. So it's the only place it can be. But with that, for some reason I was thinking the valves come with new collets, but of course they don't. So, I'm going to put that one somewhere safe. Don't think it's actually got damaged. Um, nuts. Yeah, that's a bit of a bugger, those. Never mind. These things are sent to try. Well, usually me. So I'm only going to do, I'll just put two. Well, I'll put some head bolts back in. It really needs to support the weight of the engine. <clears throat> it's not to seal the head down. With the old gasket still in place. And then put the engine mount back on. Then go up in the air. Drain the oil. Which I was going to do. I picked up a filter for it. Uh, earlier. So I was going to do oil and filter anyway. <clears throat> but I was hoping to get away without chain, taking a sump off. But eh, things are sent to try us. Bugger. What's the expression? Can't be good, be lucky. I just found the other one. And it was stuck in one of these bits in here. So, we haven't got to take the sump off. Which means we haven't got to put the head back on. Which means, oh, Dave just got a measure would be better. Thank God for that. I don't thank God a lot. Yeah, that's good. We're happy. So, valve replacement. I think I've had enough. Oh, sorry. I think I've had enough for one day. So, eight new valves. Ground in. Found all the collets. Eight old valves. Not noticeably bent, but I don't think it takes a lot. It's a high compression. Diesel engine. Uh, one O ring came off there. To go 
back on there. Lovely. And other than that, that's ready to go back on. I haven't lost any bits, so we're going to drop the sump, we're going to drop the oil in the morning. Uh, water pump tensioners. Ed can go back on. Oh, it's open block, open deck. I don't know. Yeah. Bad couple of hours. Can't feel my fingers. Generally, I don't know. We'll be back. Hello. Easy like Sunday morning, yeah. Um, so we've started reassembly. So we're putting a new water pump on, new tensioner, new idler, whatever that's called. Um, cleaned up the top of the block, put the new head gasket on, cleaned up the bottom of the head. You know, obviously, we put the eight new valves in there yesterday. So we're ready for the head to go on. And then procedure is 24, 20 newton meters, 40 newton meters, then 130 degrees. Which would be great if I could find my torque wrench. So they will follow a short period of walking on a swearing, going where the flipping heck is that. But we won't be defeated. The moment has come. Found my torque wrench. Let's do it. So we've cleaned up the head's torque down now. We've cleaned up the top surface of the head ready for the next section to go on. Next section, which is that one, is similarly cleaned up. Uh, we've got the rockers and the um, hydraulic ball studs, is what they're called. And if we have a look, this is the cam. Even with the naked eye, where's my torch? 
So it's the first one, the third one, the fifth one, and the seventh one. If you look at where we've got both grooves more or less down, look at where that lobe is compared to that lobe. That one, this one is rotated round to the right a bit. That one, this is rotated round to the right, so that one's at, uh, we're looking at this one here. If you look at that one, it's round. And same on that one. That's at about this angle, and that's almost pointing across. So that's why you need to change the cam, unfortunately. So yeah, next next step, get some instant gasket on S, get that next section on, then lube everything up. Cam can go in. Um, then that top cam follower. Um, first, I'm going to rotate the engine and get the bottom on the timing mark. Just to make sure. We haven't got any pistons right at the top, but in case I've got to rotate it around to get it there. Um, timing mark on the cam crank, even, is... Uh, what's happened to that? Oh, see that hole in the top where there's slots and there's one hole. So we've got to go round... The timing mark is there, right at 12 o'clock. So we'll turn that round slightly, so we know we're bang on with that. And then we'll put the cam in with it on timing mark as well. Hmm. Hmm. Nearly made a deliberate mistake, eh? Rush in. Um, Realised there's a specific order you've got to do this. I haven't put the cam in yet. Put the followers and the... Um, whatever they're called tap some followers and loop them up nicely with the assembly loop but you go put the injector pipes on first then the inlet manifold and fuel filter block then you can bolt this block back on um, I said in my other video that this is a coolant it's not, it's exhaust gas and then that goes on last <clears throat> if you do it in any different order you can't do the next bit which is what I just did. So I just take the inlet manifold back off and the uh, fuel filter block. So we're going to do fuel pipes next, then inlet manifold and fuel filter block, then whatever the hell this is, EGR, something or other, and that bolts into the back of the inlet manifold. And yeah, we're getting there then, I think. So there should be two pipes. And there's two pipes. Right, okay. Yeah, we're all right. Close one, but we're all right. Put slightly too much instant gasket on this, but... Mm. Hey-ho. Uh, yeah, once we've got all that lot back on, then we're going to do thermostat housing back, which is under there. That can go back on. Then we're going to put the cam in with some assembly lube. Time the cam so we got it where we want it, uh, make sure we lube all of the lobes, then the cam carrier on the top, then the air pump, and then it should be timed, so then we can put the timing belt on, then we can do engine mount, and then start rebuilding this front section up. That's right, isn't it? Yes, that's right. So yeah, it's quite easy with this to get a little bit out of sync and it can cost you if you've tightened everything up. Luckily I hadn't. Um, yeah, pay attention. I know it's Sunday morning, but I've still got loads of bits. <laughs> it should go back to get it should go back together quicker than it came apart, but I'm sure everybody says that. Uh, still got quite a lot left in a way sorted bolt box but we will get there all right now we're vibing on we car we're liking this now uh all this back bits bolted back on in that manifold block dpf thing that's all good we've got all the earth connections which is a couple here which hold this loomy thing uh glow plugs are plug pack in fuel lines are all tight let's take this fuel line back off to get the bracket underneath it it was a bit of a knob uh, thermostat housing is back on and tight. Air pump is just sort of out the way. 
So next stage is going to be clean these lobes out a little bit and get the cam in. Um, I'm going to put the cam pulley on first and then uh, the upper cam follower, holder thing, this bit. Um, there is a timing mark for the fuel pump, but there's absolutely no need to use it, but I lined it up with it, but I haven't got a pin to go in there at the moment. So I did a little diagram, always do yourself a cheat sheet. Uh, so yeah, next stage cam in, loads of lube on it, and then get that roughly timed so we're happy, and then get the carrier on top of it. And then remember to do the cam sensor next as well. Okay. All right. At last, the home stretch. If it works. Fingers crossed. Um, cam's in with loads of lube on it. I'll put a bit more on the lobes before the rocker cover goes on. That's locked in timing. Point. Air pump is on and tightened up. So we're working our way up towards the top. Now we're going to put the timer belt on and set the tensioner, which is that one, which you need a 5mm Allen key to do. Once that, once the timer belt's on and sorted, um, bottom pulley can go on. Oh, uh, no, can it? No, once the timer belt's on and sorted, crankshaft sensor can go back on, which is down there. Then the cover... Then the engine mount, then the rock cover, then the top cam belt cover. Then we rebuild this front end, then the various bits that go on the top. Turbocharger, DPF, connect that to the exhaust, intercooler, radiator, which all that stuff only took an hour and a half to take off. And as you can see, we've been cranking on it. The engine has sort of crept forward a little bit, but we'll move that back, that'll be fine. So oh, yeah, it's considering it's Sunday morning, that one can go back in. Can it? Yeah. Oh no. Oh, that'd be about it. Right, you need two hands to do that. The the rest you need to leave loose. Oops. You need to leave loose so you can get the cam uh rocker cover back on. So it's rocker cover EGR. Yeah, well. Reversal of what we did before. But yeah, pretty happy now. And I think we are winning. We've cranked it, uh, barred it over twice. And the pins go back into the... That one's a bit tight. But pins go back into the timing marks. And even the fuel pump one is lying back up with a hole. Which I didn't actually... That's what I should have done, but... Didn't have enough pins. So, yeah. Stick some more lube. Uh, all our fingers are still nice. Yeah, none of them have jumped out. Uh, we'll put a bit more instant lube on them. Uh, alternator bracket can go back on. Work out all this wiring. That's fine. Not worried about that. They're all unique. Um, can the engine mount go back on? Probably can now. So yeah, we. It's a massive relief. You can hear it making compression and everything when you turn it over. I did it slowly, just as it was reaching compression, then let it release, and then turned it the rest of the way. So oh, I can't stop doing it. I noticed on my videos I'm doing this because I got oil on my hands. It must be like a nervous thing. But I got to stop doing it. I apologize. Uh, yeah, next time we'll be on. Two o'clock. Okay, so we've got two and a half hours to get it rebuilt. Yeah, I think I got here about half past ten. So about two and a half hours to get it rebuilt to this, this stage. So we'll keep plodding on getting the front of the engine rebuilt. And we'll try a test start today before we go home. And then in the morning, all I've got to do is put this front stuff's back on but again not worried about that particularly famous last words okay excellent 
So we're up the course. We started half ten, quarter to eleven, with the valve uh, head done with the new valves in. It's now quarter to three. Um, I've massively stopped. We're looking pretty good. Uh, engine mounts back in properly. All the cam belt covers, rock cover, EGR fuel filter. Um, so we're gonna do the bracket for the top of the alternator, then the alternator and go on properly. Then we can, uh, there's another bracket that goes over the top of that, which holds all the wiring and the plugs. Put them on. Um, connect up the alternator. Air conditioning pump goes on at the bottom. Then turbo, DPF, and downpipe. Connect that. Um, where is the airflow meter? Um, might have to put the air box back on as well for the test fire but we're going to basically do everything bar the uh, or, uh, do I put the intercooler on stop doing that um, I don't know turbo's got to go on otherwise it's going to piss oil everywhere uh, downpipe can go on so we can do all the connections so mm, we'll see Yeah, we, we have broke the back of it. But another hour should be on a test test fire and I'll either be very depressed or very happy. Right, so I'm going to cooler. But everything else, in theory, if this has all gone semi-successfully, should work now. It'll be loud because I haven't got the doors connected on down there. Uh, Right. Good luck, everybody. Not here. Oh, please work. Okay. All right, don't work. Knob. Yes. All right, so we've got a bit of a fuel. That is interesting. I think that's because the intercooler's not on. Okay. I'm going to put the intercooler on quickly. Ah! It's 
Bismillah ne eder denize? Bismillah ne eder denize? No, no, no. How are you doing? We're at a very yeah. critical part. Looks to be more or less together. We're still at a very critical part. Uh, start with uh, that. Oh, no, I didn't have that before. The intercooler was not on that thing. It starts, but it won't run. Okay. Well, it starts and turns off. Yeah. Exactly the same symptoms as the other one. Apart from one thing, which I didn't realise at the time, and I was quite merrily working away. Um, the one of the top of one of the valves had come off. It hadn't come off, but the collets had come out. So I thought, oh, never mind, the valve still moves, so it hadn't lost its head and gone inside, so it took it all apart. Hang on, this is before, this is before you've done the... This is before, so you had the same smashed fingers. Yeah, yeah. But well, you were putting new valves in anyway, weren't you? Yes, but new valves don't come with new collets. Yeah. I realised after about four hours. And I didn't have the collet. I found one on a ledge going down into the block into the sub, which was good and bad. And then I found one stuck to one of the castings in the blumen, the bit of the... Well, the, the piston or something. No, it? it was stuck in one of the head castings in some oily gunk. Of course, it was on top, isn't it? So it was on the top. It wouldn't have gone in the cylinders. No, but it would have gone into the sump, which would have meant taking the sump off, which I didn't want to do, because like last time I'd done that, I bent all... Because this time, I haven't got any loose bits. Because this time, these roller bits here, on Emily's car, they smashed the bits and all these rollers came out. On this one, I managed to find uh, all the bits. Okay, so so didn't have to take the sump off. And okay. also, if you take the sump off, how likely is he going to find one collet? Yeah, yeah. And then, so found him, great. Doing the next, doing the last valve. It it the uh, break the thing on the top. Bing! What was that? Two collets have jumped out of it. Alright, one, see that hole there? It was nestling just in that hole there. <laughs> yeah. um, which, like, wait in for you to... Uh, Not hurting it. No, touch it, and it goes, because that hole goes down quite away. Um, <coughs> so, yeah, other than that, um, the cam was, <coughs> again, um, but I'd done a cam kit. So, now with the intercooler on, ticking over, we're at it. Must be done for the day. Yeah, that's... Yeah, okay. Right, yesterday's uh, successful test fire. We, it wouldn't take over until I put the intercooler on. The intercooler's got to go on as part of the radiator panel. So just whip this off quickly. Um, I'm going to do headlights back in. Intercooler. Can you... Ah, there is one nut. Right, we're going to take the air box back off. There's a bolt still to go in this pipe, which means it's quite easy. So yeah, air box back off. There's one nut which holds the DPF block on the on the back of the engine. I want to put that on. Um, 
and then yeah headlights radiator and bottom bar thing intercooler connect those up put coolant in it bleed the coolant system do oil and filter uh crash bar front bumper wheel arch liners wheels done out the door yeah all righty then but now we're according to when i filmed the last video about an hour further on um it goes back together pretty fast by the time we get to this point so we've got headlights in intercoolers in connected acon rad is completely knackered but it was knackered before uh crash bars in they're all bolted up uh put four liters of antifreeze in it which could have put some water in really uh bled it at the bleed screw on the thermostat housing until it comes out of there that's higher than anyone else in the car. I don't think I've drained down the heaters, so we should be okay. But I will try and bleed those as well. Um, yeah, all the fan wiring is connected, headlights connected, headlights bolted in. So the next stage, I'm going to... I've got a new oil filter, which is there. So I'm going to run it for a couple of minutes and uh, warm the oil up slightly see if we can just bleed the coolant system a little bit more and then drop the oil and while that's draining uh put the front bumper back on and then should be out there so yeah we've done last video was yeah about 40 minutes ago anyway so yeah it's if you crack on with it and concentrate it's not too bad and i managed to put the nut i was talking about is the one on the one side of the inlet manifold down there that holds this block on so there is a secret bolt underneath that ain't going back on, to be honest. And the two bolts on the end of this, underneath the, one of the which I snapped, there's another one that goes up, but that's not going back on either. I've only, every one of these I've touched, there's only ever been the top bolt in this, and this one was the same, that bolt wasn't in there. So again, only one bolt in that. Other than that, it will be factory-ish fresh. Uh, yeah, temporarily put the airbox back on and um and warm it up and maybe start tidying up a bit my floor okay next bit and i've done the oil and filter when you start it i'm still getting that engine fault attend service or something like that but i didn't clear anything or try reading the codes oh, so we've got eight <coughs> Right, we'll come back when this is finished. Right then, what we got? Uh, intermittent. Okay, that's good. Intermittent. 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 So that's all stuff I've done. I when I was putting the air filter on, um, <coughs> I knocked the injector wire off. So I think that's why we've got that one. Okay, let's see if they go. Uh, we got one in multifunction. No, we've got nine in multifunction. What's all that? So, uh, they're old. It goes through light bulbs like a flipping Christmas tree, this car. Let's see if we can clear them. Come on, green. Green! That's what we're talking about. Uh, what have we still got in multifunction? Uh, front right dip dead light. Front left fog. Oh, well, the fog lights aren't plugged in, so that would be why. Headlight again. I must have done five headlight bulbs on this car. Uh, reverse light and wider about. So I'll do the headlight. That's fine. Okay, so if we start it now. Yeah. Engine management light go out. Yes! No engine fault on there. Okay. Woo! Starting to get a bit worried then. Okay, so we'll... Um, Oil filter's done, oil's topped up. 
Uh, I might put a little bit more antifreeze in just to bring it up to the max. So that's why it blew. It's on 135,000. And the timing belt on these is nine years or 100,000 miles. So he did well to get to as much as he did. And the last one I did was on 10 years, 101,000 miles. Uh, I might try and reset his clock, perhaps. So it's not flashing. Uh, yeah, we'll get a front bumper on. Flipping Abbey. Dirt, flipping dirt. So it is five to two. And we large bumper wheels. Done quite a lot again today. I've got one tiny little air box bit, which you can see is just on slam panel there. Started tidying all my tools up. Oh, there's a bit of an engine cover thing going on the top. Found pretty much everything. We've got one spare bolt, but I know what that is. And it's not going back in. So, yeah. Hopefully, it's been helpful, informative. Me wrestling my... I've stopped doing that now. I've, I've, it's because I've got nibbly, knobbly bits on these gloves. It's, it's doing my head in as well, so I apologise massively. I might play a quiet backing track over the top of this video. We'll see. Whether they even make this into a video, I don't know. But, yeah. Thank, now starts. Perfect. On the button. Ticks over. no fault cords, oil's full, antifreeze is full, we are good, job done, and I replaced his head like bulb. So I'm happy, big Nigel's going to be happy, everyone have a Merry Christmas from GFix, thanks for watching, please like, comment, subscribe, see you soon.